Hi, this is a video uh, on naming inorganic compounds, and I'm following Brown, uh, Burston, LeMay, and Murphy's uh, chemistry textbook called Chemistry, the Central Science. So there are two basic uh, kinds of, of compounds, as it were, or a compound is more than one atom uh, connected. Uh, by the way, the word nomenclature is basically a high flutin word for naming, so the names that we call things. So the two different kinds of compounds, organic compounds, we used to think of organic compounds as basically um, compounds that relate to living things. Um, but, uh, and you can take a course in organic chemistry. Um, now we think of organic compounds as basically carbon-based compounds, which of course is, you know, me, I'm a carbon-based unit, you're a carbon-based unit, all God's children are carbon-based units. Um, and so uh, these carbon uh, compounds often uh, are conjoined with hydrogens, oxygens, nitrogens, and uh, sulfur. Those are the key kinds of, of uh, components of organic uh, molecules and such. And then inorganic compounds is everything else. Metals, metallic uh, compounds, ionic compounds, and, and so forth. So this video is about how, uh, what, what are the naming conventions in chemistry. So uh, here are three different kinds of, of uh, inorganic compounds. So ionic compounds are compounds that bond uh, on the basis of charge or electro, uh, uh, electric uh, attraction between positive charges and negative charges. Usually the, the ionic compounds are based upon the outer edges of the periodic table, so like metals, uh, with with nonmetals, uh, and so those are ionic compounds. Those are inorganic compounds. Uh, molecular compounds tend to bond on the basis of covalent bonding, which is when electrons are shared uh, between uh, atoms. And then acids are um, uh, unique enough to have their own kind of uh, category here. An acid, uh, on a, on a popular level, we think of an acid as um, uh, something that has a hydrogen. Uh, that, that, that hydrogen is donated in the solution. Uh, we might say a, an acid is a, uh, a compound that is a proton donor, that when you put it in solution, the hydrogen uh, becomes that hydrogen ion, H plus one, um, and becomes available to do stuff. Um, so acids, um, ionic compounds, molecular compounds, and acids are examples of inorganic compounds. Okay, so how do we name positive ions, also called cations. I think cats are positive, which they aren't, which helps me remember it. Uh, so cations are positive ions, ions uh, with a positive charge. So when you're naming cations uh, that involve a metal like sodium or zinc or uh, aluminum, uh, a lot of times the ion will simply have the name of the element. So the ion, an ion of sodium is a sodium ion, or an ion of zinc is a zinc ion, or an ion of aluminum is an aluminum uh, ion. So that's the convention for uh, naming the metal. And the cations are usually the first part, uh, are usually named first, and their, their, uh, their symbol is usually put first uh, in a compound. Okay, so you'll have zinc you know, oxide or whatever. Um, now, if the metal has more than one cation, uh, so for example, transition metals that are in the middle of the periodic table, um, a lot of times they, they will take, uh, they'll be named like this. So iron is, has been known, of course, for th over 3,000 years. Um, and so the, the symbol for iron comes from the Latin for iron, which is ferrum. Uh, so Fe, um, you know, English wasn't around when iron was named. Um, and so, uh, however, iron can have more than one uh, uh, ion form. So there's the two plus form of iron uh, that we call, what we do is we call this iron and then in parentheses we put the Roman numeral two because it has a, a two plus charge. Um, so that's the iron two ion. Now they used to call this f the ferrous, uh, so like if you had uh, iron oxide you you know that that was plus two you would call it ferrous oxide uh, and then the the other form is the the three plus form of iron uh, that we would now write with iron and in parentheses roman numeral three it used to be called ferric um, so uh, if it was a iron plus three then it would be called ferric 
whatever. Um, so those are the conventions for uh, naming positive ions or cations. That didn't take uh, very long. Uh, oh, by the way, another one here, that if you have a non-metal cation, uh, you put eum on it. So like hydrogen isn't really a metal, uh, even though it's in the first column. And so the, the H plus, uh, the one plus uh, ion is hydronium, the hydronium ion, H plus one. Uh, so there you have it. That pretty much sums up uh, the naming conventions for cations, the positive ions that are usually first in the formula. It's going to take a little bit longer uh, to talk about the naming of negative ions called anions. So um, here's the convention. If you have a single atom anion, uh, you add ide to it. So take a single oxygen uh, that has a 2 minus uh, charge. Uh, we're going to call that oxide uh, because it's a monatomic. It's monatomic. It's just one oxygen, uh, but it has a negative charge, uh, and there it's a uh, so it's an anion, and we're going to call it oxide. Um, now there are also polyatomic anions. This is where you have more than one. Uh, so you have you have the positive cation, and then you have the negative anion. And the negative anion is made up of more than one atoms. So that atoms, more than one atom. That's what we mean by polyatomic. Um, so, for example, you have oxy anions. Uh, these are uh, like chlorine and oxy oxygen uh, that that come together uh, to make the anion. Um, now, they they could be either eight or they could be eight. So, you, uh, chemistry uses eight uh, for the most common uh, anion. So, for example, nitrate, uh, NO3 uh, minus 1. Uh, nitrate uh, is a, it's polyatomic, right? Because this, it, first, first of all, it's an anion because NO3 altogether makes a negative 1 charge. Uh, so it's an anion. It's polyatomic because you have more than one atom making up this collective anion. Um, and it's an oxy anion because it has oxygen uh, in it. This is the most common form of, of nitrogen oxygen in combination, and so we're going to use the eight for it. It's nitrate, the nitrate ion. Now, you can have a nitrite ion. This is a less common, a less common oxyanion. It, it's, an, it's an oxyanion because it has oxygen and, nitro, and nitrogen. It is a polyatomic one because it has more than one molecule there. Um, it is an anion because it has a negative uh, charge. We're going to call it nitrite because it is less common uh, and it has one fewer atoms uh, than the nitrate ion. Okay, so this is the nitrite uh, ion. Okay, some more. So now sometimes uh, when you have more oxygens, uh, so this we had nitrate with three oxygens and we had nitrite with two oxygens. If we go up and have four oxygen, um, when you have one more oxygen than the eight, uh, then it, it, um, we call it perchlorate. So ClO4 uh, with a minus one charge is the perchlorate ion. Now ClO3 is, is the chlorate, uh, is just, just chlorate ion. ClO2 is the chlorite ion. And then if we go below uh, ClO2, we have the hypo. Hypo means under. Hypodermic needle goes under the skin. So hypochlorite is when you have one less oxygen than ite. So we have perchlorate, eight, ite, hypoite. And that's the way it goes. Okay, um, let me also mention um, that um, when you have hydrogen plus one or hydro eight, two hydrogens plus two, um, you give this the name hydrogen or dihydrogen. So dihydrogen, um, di is Greek for two uh, in this context. Okay, so here are some common anions that you should just memorize. If you're going to do anything in chemistry, you should have these memorized. So there's the hydroxide uh, anion. Um, such, this is part of water, for example. Uh, there's the oxide we've already mentioned with a minus two charge. There's sulfide uh, with a minus two charge. 
There's the acetate ion with a negative one charge. There's the per perchlorate uh, ion that we've already mentioned. There's the nitrate ion we've already mentioned. Carbonate uh, with a two minus charge. Um, sulfate uh, with a two minus charge. So these are some of the most common uh, anions. Lastly, phosphate with a three minus uh, charge. Okay, uh, so these are, these are uh, anions you should have memorized. Uh, okay, naming acids. Um, first of all, uh, when you have an acid, you take the "-ied", and you make it into an "-ic". So the solid form of hydrogen chloride um, is called hydrogen chloride. It's HCl. That's the solid form. But if you put hydrogen chloride in water, it's going to dissociate and ionize, and you're going to have H plus and Cl minus. And so we no longer call it hydrogen chloride when it's in its dissolved form. Now we call it hydrochloric acid, uh, ic, hydrochloric. And so you take an ide uh, when it's an acid, and you make it an ic. Um, so chloride becomes hydrochloric acid. Sulfide becomes hydrosulfuric acid. By the way, there is an H2, there's an H2SO4, which is simply called sulfuric acid. Um, this H2S is called hydrosulfuric uh, acid. Okay, um, if, it, if it was an ite, then you make it into an us in its uh, acidic form. So chlorite um, uh, becomes chlorous acid uh, when it's in uh, water. Um, okay, lastly, binary compounds. So the elements uh, to the left are uh, on the periodic chart are usually named first. Um, this is where I was talking about the cations usually named first. And of course the cations tend to be uh, on the, um, the left side, not always. But in general, elements that are, that are on the left side of the periodic chart are usually named first. By the way, oxygen is always named last. That's just the convention. Uh, now, if you have two, you can have a compound that has two elements in the same group. And in this case, the, the lower number, which is the higher atomic number, remember the numbers go up as you go down. So the higher atomic number is named first, and then the lesser atomic number is named second. Um, ide is put on the second element. I mentioned hydrogen chloride. So the second, uh, the second element in a binary compound. This is where you have two. And then you use Greek prefixes uh, for the number of atoms. So remember dihydrogen, um, uh, or di, what was it, di, um, di yeah, dihydrogen. So um, you have uh, di for two, you have tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, hexa for six, hepta, and so forth. And I think that's it for this section on the conventions for naming inorganic compounds. Yes, that's it. Um, see you next time.